Going home in a couple of minutes time around the country. Welcome to Melbourne, welcome to Big Time Boxing Live on Australia's sports leader, Fox Sports. Our main event tonight is for the IBO Light Heavyweight Championship of the World. Undefeated Australian Blake Caparello and American Alan Green. But there's a twist. But isn't there always a twist in the world of professional boxing? More on that shortly. Also tonight, heavyweight Solomon Amono, Reven Cesare, Cesar Amonsot, and the returning Lenny Zappavinia. It is an explosive for live fight card. Let's check out what's on your boxing menu here tonight. We start with the heavyweights, Brazilian Marcelo Luiz Nascimento and the OPBF heavyweight champ Solomon Hamono. This one for the big boys scheduled for eight. Also over eight, this time at welterweight, the long-awaited TV return of former world title challenger Lenny Zappavinia, who has jumped into the deep end of the pool against the super smooth Reven Cesare. Tonight's semi-main is the second of three international fights. It sees Cesar Amonsot defend his regional title against the number two ranked Stevie Ferdinandis from Indonesia. Twelve rounds here. Our main is up in weight, Australia versus the United States. Our unbeaten Blake Caparello against veteran American Alan Green. Twelve rounds, IBO Light Heavyweight Championship of the World. Joining me in commentary tonight, former national champion Chris McCullen. Time to explain the twist, an unfortunate twist. Yeah, look, on the line tonight was a former the light heavyweight world title, which means you must weigh in under the weight limit of 79.38 kilograms 24 hours before the fight. For Blake Caparello, no problem, so that title's still on the line. For his opponent, Alan Green, will he come in close to three kilograms over the weight limit, which means the title, no matter what happens tonight, he will not go home world champion. Irrespective of what does happen tonight, it is the ultimate sign of disrespect. Yeah, look, we've got a professional boxer in a professional sport acting quite unprofessional. For mine, look, I can only see it as there's a fighter here to collect his money and no real care or need for that world title. I just hope that he's put a little bit more, you know, time and effort into the fight than he did make him wait. So, Alan Green cannot win the title with a victory tonight. Blake Keparello can win the title with a victory tonight. Confused? Don't be, we'll explain it further later in the evening. Now, if you've followed the career of Blake Caparello right here on Fox Sports, this genuinely is the global launch pad he's been waiting for and a change of style of late, Chris. Yeah, look, I think if, if you look at Blake's last few fights, he's probably been maybe a little strategic or a little defensive at times. I'm sure his team will agree. Tonight, he needs to step up the game plan. He needs to have a bigger work rate. I'd like to see him try and outwork a uh, Alan Green. And look, the opportunity's there for Blake Caparello. Use his speed, use his angles, and bamboozle the American. Fight of the night. Many are suggesting Lenny Zapovinia, Reven Cesare, contrasting styles. Yeah, it is the one that I'm looking forward to. And again, it's the typical boxer versus puncher. And that's the way I see it play, paying out. Uh, Cesare will work the outside of the ring, slick movements, angles, try and counter Lenny. Lenny, well, we all know he's a pressure fighter, so he'll walk, he'll just try and walk down uh, Cesare and try and outpower him. Look forward to your comments throughout the course of the evening. There is so much happening here in Melbourne. In fact, around Australia and across the globe in the coming months, you'll see it all right here on Fox Sports. But from Melbourne on Big Time Boxing, it's showtime. Welcome to the Pavilion, welcome to Melbourne, Victoria, a purpose-built venue in the heart of Flemington. It is sold out for an explosive four-live fight card culminating in an IBO World Championship match, Australia versus the United States. Blake Caparillo, Alan Green and plenty of bad blood. 
However, we're going to start in the heavyweight division, the first of three international contests here tonight. From Brazil, Marcelo Luiz Nascimento at 32 years of age, six years younger than his local opponent, Solomon Amono, who is the current OPBF heavyweight champion. It is the Brazilian with a distinct height and reach advantage, but on the scales 24 hours ago, it was Hamono by 7.6 kilograms. Bout number one, one of four. Let's go center ring to Mr. Perry Kale. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the Melbourne Pavilion for our first televised contest around Australia. Ladies and gentlemen, introducing first from the red corner, fighting out of Sao Paulo, Brazil, please welcome Marcelo Luiz Nascimento. His opponent, the former rugby league player, ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Solomon Solo Homono. Our opening contest, ladies and gentlemen, live on Fox Sports, eight by three minute rounds in the heavyweight division. Proudly brought to you by AC Constructions. When the action begins, our referee in charge is Mr. Ignatius Missalides. Firstly, Tim my right, fighting out of the red corner. This man is self-trained. Official weight, 103 kilograms, even. Standing six feet five inches tall. Tonight wearing the red shorts with a silver and grey trim. A quarter finalist in the TV series, Prize Fighter. Fighting out of Sao Paulo, Brazil. 20 fights, 16 wins, 14 by way of knockout. Please welcome Sancho Asso, Marcela, Luis, Nascimento. And his opponent to my left, fighting under the blue corner, trained by Dino Billinghurst from the Costa Zoo Boxing Academy. Official weight, 110.6 kilograms, standing six feet two inches tall. Tonight wearing the black and white fight shorts, born in Auckland, New Zealand, now residing in Sydney, New South Wales. Ranked number three in Australia and 33 in the world by the WEC, the current OPBF heavyweight champion. 24 fights, 20 wins, two draws, 18 by way of knockout. Please welcome Solomon Solo Hermono. Find us to center in please for final instructions. Marcello. Solomon. Solomon. Breathing. All right guys, I want you to protect yourselves all the time and obey my commands all the time. Understand? Touch gloves now and good luck. Yes, Cheers, mate. Here we go, Brazil versus Australia. Marcelo Nascimento and that man, Solomon Hermono. The big boys with the big bang, ready to get the party started. You ready? You ready? Six out, round one. 
We are live on Fox Sports around Australia. Big time boxing from Melbourne, the heavyweight division. Eight three minute rounds in the plus 90.7 kilo division. The orange trunks, Nascimento, the black and white, Homono. Nascimento with a distinct height and reach advantage, but the power we know, Homono boasts that. Oh, he's looking for the big bomb early, Solomon. Andy Raymond along with the former national champion, the little big man, Chris McCullen. Yeah, what a way to open the night, the big heavyweight, straight into it. Solo, just straight on, walking down. Nascimento. Nascimento, 16 wins in 20 fights, 14 of them via way of knockout. You can already see Nascimento's hands very low and Solo's going to look, you'll see that shot and the overhand come a fair bit in this fight until hopefully for Solo he can find the chin of Nascimento. I didn't realise there were still heavyweight boxers in Brazil. I thought they'd all ventured to mixed martial arts. It seems the UFC heavyweight division stacked full of them. Good to see a Nascimento really winding up here. Yeah, that was better from Nascimento. Solo just shows Solo's still got to be careful. Looked like Nascimento was just happy just to walk on the back foot. No real footwork in it, just walk. And then he wound one up. Sol looks in great shape at uh, 110.6 kilos. Debuted at 103 kilos, did Solomon Amono. That was all the way back in July of 2000. The Sydney Entertainment Centre with a first round knockout over Ken Fuller, of course, on the undercard of Anthony Mundine, Gerard Zoss. Anthony Mundine is back at the Sydney Entertainment Centre next Wednesday night. Gerard Zoss is not. <laughs> but Sugar Shane Mosley is. What a fight that promises to be. What a card it promises to be. Mundine Mosley. You can see all the action live on Main Event TV and Fox Sports venues. Without being disrespectful to Zoss, there's a fair difference between Zoss and Mosley. <laughs> and then Jared comes in second. <laughs> Sol just looking a little out of rhythm. Yeah, we've seen Sol in the past got good boxing skills, good fast hands and nice and fluent. We've seen him the night when he fought Michael Kirby that night. He just slowly broke Kirby down. Here he just looks to be loading up for the big shot. Oh, and there's one. Sol last fought April of this year. A KO loss in the 10th round to a very tough American Kevin Johnson. Right here in Melbourne as the boys go back to their corners. Oh, Max. What we've got to do here, he's got to cut this guy off a little bit more. Right, because right? he's, move, he's moving to your right and you're not catching him. Right. So I want you to cut him off a little bit more and just to come across the right a little bit more. Right, and move up on him a little bit closer. If you are part of the social media set, join the conversation as thousands will right now. Make sure you use the hashtag OzBoxing. We are tweeting live from ringside. Join the conversation. Let us know your thoughts on how the night's going. Came out by himself. Marcelo Nascimento has got Tony Nobbs, our resident boxing encyclopedia in his corner, a huge part of the Fox Sports boxing team, Tony Nobbs. Hope he's uh, picked up on his Brazilian or his Spanish, Nobbsy. Nobbsy struggles with English at the best of times. <laughs> we go straight back into it, Sol just walking forward. I think he needs to use his jab a little bit more, he's got a good jab. Double it up and, uh, you know, try and open up Nascimento. If he just leads with that overhand like he's trying to do, he, he's not going to get it the same way he will if he lands the jab on the chest first. Huge height and reach advantage. The best part of uh, 8 centimetres in height, 10 centimetres in reach. So Nascimento can afford just to be a little more on the back foot than what Solomon can. Try and find his range in that 10 centimetre range. 
crucial. Right at the end of the punch. One minute down, two minutes remain, round number two. The corner tonight of Solomon Amono, who's trainer Dino Billinghurst, along with his dad Marley, a former Aussie and OPBF heavyweight champion, fought the legendary Tony Mundine on three occasions. But also over there is the Lionheart, Alex Leopi, as Amono bites down on the mouth guard and lets them go. Those two have done a fair bit of sparring over the years. Leopi and Big Soul. Yeah, I really think Soul needs to use the jab. I said it earlier, he needs to get on the jab. Oh, that one will help too. Absolutely it will. Uh, Solomon. There's a real look at determination on the face. Was quite subtle in his movement. Quite controlled. Almost a little subdued in the opening round. Not the case in round number two. Nascimento swings. Uh, you can see the way Nascimento works to the left-hand side. Hands down low. One of those right hands the Souls won't miss. A few may, but one won't. Nice little left hand there from Hamona. Caught the attention of the 32-year-old Brazilian. Asius Missalides, uh, should I say? Oh, left hook. Asius Missalides is our referee. Keeping his distance from the big boys. Probably a wise move. Oh, Hamona. That had Leopold written all over it. In round two. Round two done. Maybe one apiece. Let's have a look at our first replay for the night. That's probably one of Sol's better shots, and that's the shot he needs to do, but as his trainer Dino Billinghurst just said, use the jab first. You can see the hands are nice and low on Nascimento. So Sol needs to take advantage of that. Stay there, guys. Stay there, stay there, Sol. Preparing for round number three. Sol on Amono, Marcelo Nascimento. Australia versus Brazil. Hamono in the black and white. Nascimento in the orange. Hamono immediately dominates that centre ring position, forcing the Brazilian onto his back foot, circling around predominantly to his left. Oh, over the top of the right hand there, caught Hamono. He did Sol's left hand get a little low, and Nascimento took advantage of that. Oh, Nascimento tagged there, paid the penalty for missing. Really loading up as the Brazilian. Oh. And he is out. Good night. Fight over. There is no need to count. No need. Round number three. And Super Solo finishes it super sweetly. Well, there was no other way you could see that going. No. Nascimento decided to move around to Solomon Amono's right hand with his hands down low. Oh, isn't that just gentlemanly? Yeah, he is a gentleman, Solomon Amono. Wow, what a shot. Whoa. Nascimento on rubber legs, helped back to his corner by the Lionheart Alex Leopi and Tony Nobbs. Mona with a well, let's have a look at how it went and you watch the jab from Solomon Amono even the left jab from Solo heard Nascimento not as much as this next shot boom 
<laughs> right on the whiskers. He's a tall man, Nascimento has a long way to fall, but wow, what a oh, shot oh, from Solomon oh, Rona. You would rather run into the 402 bus heading into the city than Solomon Amono's right hand. Oh, that's for sure. Well, he's looking all right. Marcelo Nascimento. Probably not sure what went on. Victory for Solomon Amono. Let's go centering with Perry. Make this one official. Ladies and gentlemen, referee Ignatius Missolini puts a stop to this contest. 56 seconds into the third round. The winner by a knockout, Solomon Solo Hamano. A huge win for the big fella, Solomon Hamano. His record now 25 fights, 21 victories, 19 knockouts. We know his strength. There is no secrets to that. Good win from Solomon Amono to open our night here tonight. Still to come on this edition of Big Time Boxing, a welterweight super fight here in Australia. Reven Cesare against the returning to television Lenny Zappavinia. We're at welterweight for eight three-minute rounds. Stevie Ferdinandis and Caesar Amonsot, the champion and the number two ranked in the PABA for the light welterweight title, our semi-main event over 12 three-minute rounds, the vacant IBO light heavyweight title. 12 three-minute rounds, Alan Green, Blake Caparello, we will talk to our main eventers live after the break. Camera, Jamie's still walking over Brian, so. Okay. Gra grab Brian then. Welcome back to Fox Sports Big Time Boxing. In our opener, Solomon Amono with a devastating third round knockout over the very tough Brazilian, but it was all Amono. What a performance. He was absolutely brutal. What a way to start our night here at the Melbourne Pavilion. Our main event coming up a little bit later on this evening, Blake Caparello from Australia, undefeated up against the man who joins me now, Alan Green from the United States of America. 24 hours ago was weigh-in time and three kilos over. What went wrong in the preparation, Al? Uh, nothing really went wrong in the preparation. Well, it's, it's, uh, a lot of people don't know. I don't know if you, you know a few years back I had a surgery. Yep. 
and uh, it put me in a condition called uh, hypothyroidism. Are you, are you familiar with that? So a lot of times it's hard for me to make weight, and I didn't want to start taking medicine for this fight because it shows up like a steroid, like a quarter steroid or a cortisone or something like that. So I didn't want to start taking my medicine before this fight. I thought I made the weight. We stepped on about three different scales, so I thought I was about within three pounds. And we stepped on another scale and it said I was in, I believe, like four pounds. And then when I stepped on the scale at the weigh-in, it said I was way over that. So a, ge a genuine mistake. You, you wanted to campaign at light heavyweight. Of course, of course. Of course I would. I mean, you know, it's, it's no disrespect to Blake or his camp to the sport of boxing. I know it's looked bad. I know it looks bad. I didn't mean to do it. I hate it happened, but it happened. What do you know about Blake Caparello? What are you expecting tonight? You know, I mean, I expect him to come out, you know, and do what he can. I expect him to come out and do what he can. I mean, I, I, I know his resume. I've seen his resume. I've seen some of the guys he's, he's fought. He's a decent fighter, but like I said, I expect him to come out and do what he can, and I know what I'm coming out to do. What's your advantage tonight? Skill, strength, speed, experience. We wish you all the best. Thank you. Alan Green, one half of the main event here tonight. It is Alan Green up against the bomber, Big Blakey Caparello, who is eight years younger, uh, seven years younger than Alan Green. Uh, height, about the same reach, slightly in favour of Blake Caparello on the scales. Well, we won't go there again. Blake Caparello is joining us. Just spoke to Alan Green. Had an excuse for coming in overweight, but is three kilos worthy of an excuse or is that just being disrespectful? I find it disrespectful. Yeah. It's a real title fight. Um, the job's to make the weight. It's a light heavyweight fight. But I'll go in there. If he wants to, he's got his excuses, let him be. Does emotion now play a part in this because you're fired up? I am fired up. Um, but you've got, to be, you've got to be smart as well. It's got to be controlled, controlled aggression. Um, I can't let it get the better of me. Uh, he's a very experienced opponent. Your preparation has been different for this fight, big fella. Uh, you went to Canada, Jean Pascal. Yep. You've had Damien Hooper down here, amongst others. You've really been sparring elite level boxers. Yeah, it's been awesome. Canada was great. Had Damien Hooper, David Alua. Yep. So I've had the best preparation I can have. Um, we've taken this fight very serious and I can't wait. It's a dream, isn't it? It is a dream, of course, to win world titles, what every boxer wants to do. We wish you all the very best, and uh, I think for most of us here in Australia, kick his butt and send him home. Thank you very much. Blake Caparello, our main eventer here tonight, unbeaten coming into this world title fight for the RBO Line Heavyweight Championship. Will he leave undefeated? That's a little later on this evening. Next up, arguably, fight of the night. Many are suggesting it will be. It's in the welterweight division, 66.68 kilos. Reven Cesare, the local boy who last out fought a tech no contest with the now Australian champion, Jeff Horn. It is welcome back to Fox Sports for Lenny Zappavinia, who is just 25 years of age, has so much more in front of him. He is, however, conceding height and reach. This time, though, no difference on the scales. The welterweights ready to do their thing, and Perry, it's time to get them out. Welcome back ladies and gentlemen, bout number two of the evening, live from the Melbourne Pavilion, introducing first, fighting out of St Albans. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome the Emperor, Rivan. his opponent, the former IBO lightweight champion of the world. Please welcome Leonardo Zapovinia.
number two of the evening, eight by three minute rounds in the Walter White division. Proudly brought to you by Kabulchi Cheese. Winning action begins our referee in charge is Mr. Tony Marita. Firstly to my right, fighting out of the red corner. Trained by John Cheetah from Team Ultimate. Official weight, 66.5 kilograms. Standing five feet nine inches tall. He was a 2006 Commonwealth Games representative. Tonight, ladies and gentlemen, wearing the colours of Cameroon and Australia. Rank number four in Australia. He has a fight record of 15 fights, 11 wins, one draw, three by way of knockout. Please welcome the Emperor, Rivan Cesar. And his opponent to my left, fighting out of the blue corner. Trained by Tommy McCurry from Westside Boxing Gym. And Managed by Mike Altamura. Official weight 66.6 kilograms, standing 5 feet 6 inches tall. Tonight we're in the black shorts with a white, red, and a green trim. 31 fights, 29 wins, 20 by way of knockout. Fighting out of Leppington, New South Wales, the former IBO lightweight champion of the world. Please welcome Leonardo Zapovilla. Fighters to centering, please, for final instructions. Harry. Break that means break, understand? You take yourselves all the time and obey my commands. Touch gloves, good luck. On paper, this is one hell of a fight. Lenny Zappavinia, Reven Cesare. Fighter and boxer. You ready? You ready? Let's go. Box. We are in the welterweight yeah, division. Eight three-minute rounds. The welterweights at 66.68 kilos, 147 pound, or 10 stone seven. Reven Cesare, Lenny Zapovinia. Looking forward to seeing how Lenny handles a, a nice opponent in the welterweight division. Has been up in the welterweights before, but. With no one of the, the level of Ravan Cesare, with uh, all due respect. Straight into pretty much how we thought it would be. Cesare on the back foot, Lenny on the front foot. The evasive skills of Cesare will be tested here. Zapovinia fast, very powerful, aggressive. Yeah, for us, Lenny, I'd, I'd just concentrate on the chest and the the body early on because he is a good mover Cesare, very slick. And he's just loading up a little there early, restricting his speed as he tries to generate power. Keep him up, watch punch, keep him up. Cesare back against the ropes, comes out aggressively though. Cesare, tech drawer, round number three against Jeff Horn. Last time he fought a clash of heads, an accidental clash of heads, resulted in a pretty severe cut. You see him back in the ring here tonight. And he's got to keep that left hand up. We saw uh, it was in this venue actually when he fought Ahmed Diaz, he got caught with that right hand. Having the left hand a little low, so you know, whilst uh, you know, Cesare's not a Met Diaz, but he certainly can uh, can catch us. Cesare, very slick, very sharp. Back that to the body, Zapovinia really ripping in Cesare, more than holding his own. When he almost praying centre ring for Reuben to stand and trade. He's not going to do that, unfortunately, Lenny. He's not that silly. No, that's right. But this is a guy. Oh, that's better from Lenny. Big to the head, body. Head, We're in the welterweight division. Going to light welterweight, we understand. Lenny Zapovinia following this fight. As you look at him when he used to fight at lightweight, he must have had to work extremely hard to get down there. Geez, he looks good at the moment. He looks really healthy at... 66-6. Yeah, he looks good. Oh, Lenny's been caught. Stop, stop, stop. That was a down, that was a down, that was a down. You're over there. One, Standing two, count. three, four.
four. So it is ruled five, as a knockdown. Six, seven, eight. That was a down. That's the end of the round and it has a huge impact on what happens on the judges' scorecards. We'll check out a replay of that. The final seconds of the opening round. Jab more, keep them away, yeah? Mm -hmm. They hit you on the back of that, I know. Doesn't matter. Just keep working away, you're working, work off the jab. Throw that right hand a little bit, yeah? It's working for you nice. Don't stand there. Did it catch you? Let's have a look at what actually went on. Oh, yeah, Lenny just come a bit wild and had his hands down and got caught more. Hey, with the palm from Revance's head. Oh, yeah, good shot. Yep, knee hit the deck. That's a good ruling from Ignatius go, Mr. Leedis. Mouth go. Mouth go. Let's go, Johnny. Let's go. Round number two. two. Zampavinia down round one. Two things out of that. A real confidence builder for Revance is there. Huge. And a wake-up call for Lenny. Do not underestimate what's standing in front of you. left hand from Cesare. Zappapinia debuted all the way back in 2006. Chandler Arena in Brisbane with a first round knockout over Jason Schubert. His last fight was June this year. A first round knockout of James Amar in Newcastle. Mike's finishing his nights early. 25 years old, Lenny Zappapinia. Yep, still only a baby. 30 odd fights under his belt. Beaten the likes of Korean Jihoon Kim, Gary Sinclair, also Tommy Brown, Ryan Langham, Ray Anton Alate. His big moment was uh, challenging for the IBF title. And he lost on points in Las Vegas in March 2011 to super talented Mexican Miguel Vasquez. No shame in that. No, that's right. What a name. the two losses on his resume that one to Vasquez and the one Chris was speaking about early with Armath Diaz in this building fifth round stoppage this is smart work from Cesare he's, he's not standing still yes we'll work out later on in the fight if it, if it ties Cesare out but Lenny can't get set every time Lenny tries to work Cesare's moving and that's how he caught Lenny on the way in that's better from Lenny don't load up every shot. Or the boys trade. They certainly do, and they must both have legs like matchsticks because the upper body yeah. of these two guys, for a welterweight, huge. Yeah, big boys, aren't they? Solid boys. Tap of venue with markings around the left eye. Don't push down. Stop! Stop! Don't push down on it. You've got to keep your head up, okay? 30 seconds to go in the round. What did you make of uh, Alan Green and the excuse uh, or the reason, depending on which way you want to look at it in regards to a uh, medical issue? Yeah, look, we'll, we just have to take his word that it, he has got a medical issue. But if that's the case, why take the fight in the first place if, yeah. place if you can't make the light heavyweight division? It takes away, and, and I, I'm agreeing with Blake, a little disrespectful on the... What about the talk of three sets of scales? Well, there's a big difference, so I'd, I'm, I'd be very surprised if maybe they're his own scales or whatnot, but, I mean, three sets of scales with nearly three kilograms in them, there's, there's a big problem there. Wouldn't mind getting those scales for home, actually. Yeah, me too, I need them. Round two done. Just don't get caught on the ropes. Use your footwork and get that jab out. He just wants to get you on the ropes. That's all he wants, yeah? You're not staying there. From outside, he can't catch you. Score, score. Up and down, up and down. When the right hand's good, let it go. Breathe good, breathe deep. 
bumps his left, he's going to throw that right hand short over the top season. The great Johnny Shooter from Team Ultimate, a stalwart of the Australian kickboxing scene for a few decades now. Round three. With, uh, the more traditional, I guess, uh, Australian boxing. Certainly not more traditional in some of the Asian countries where the kickboxing is certainly dominant, but great to see Johnny. Well, good right hand. It was Zapavinia on Suze. Took the right hand well. Yeah, you don't see him get caught too often either. Cesare is very slick. Lenny's got to be careful of that there. Someone's mouth guards come out. Who's is that? Ravens. Oh, he didn't wash it. Thanks, ref. Yeah. Probably would have asked uh, for my corner to give that a bit of a clean. Still fighting out of Westside Boxing at Leppington under the watchful eye of Tommy McCurry as Lenny Zabavinia. And as good as it is seeing Lenny Zabavinia back in a Fox Sports ring, it is equally as good seeing Tommy McCurry ringside a Fox Sports ring who Tommy has had a battle of his own outside of the ring health-wise over the last couple of years and has fought an amazing fight. We are wrapped to seam ringside. Yeah, good. And look, for people who haven't seen um, Lenny and Tommy work together as a team, they're great to watch. They've got a, an, an excellent respect for each other and a very passionate and very colourful trainer is Tommy McCurry. Nice combination from both fighters. All the makings of a beauty, this one. Yeah, I think it's only going to get better as they warm up, these boys. And he's still got to be careful, that left hand just travelling a little low. Nice jab from Cesare, good body work from Lenny. Every time the zap of in your left hand goes down, that's when Cesare really moves from defence to attack and he's yeah. had some success just judging by the, the markings on the left eye of Lenny Zappavinia. It's a reminder to keep that hand up. Yeah. Oh, geez, you can just see the power in Lenny, just in his balance. 31 fights, 29 wins, 20 knockouts for Lenny Zappavinia. Left eye seems to be getting worse and the left jab's really working for Cesare. When he ducks, just watch the back of the head. Box. Final couple of seconds of round number three. Another interesting round. Stylistically, they are so far apart, these two. But it's shaping into a good fight. Cesare on the back foot, proving hard to hit. Zapavinia, as he does, just keeps coming forward. Huge response on social media so far, in particular, that Solomon Amono knockout and the Alan Green interview. We know not many of you are overly happy with Alan Green. Join the conversation if you're sitting on the lounge and you've got Twitter accessible. Love to hear from you. Join the conversation using the hashtag OzBoxing. Get all the ice out, boys. Get all the ice out. We are ready for round number four. Round four. Middle couple of rounds of this eight round wilt to eight fight. That's better work from Lenny, the left hand nice and loose. Both super amateur stars. Cesare, 200 plus fights, multi time Cameroon champion, fought at the 206 Commonwealth Games at welterweight here in Melbourne. Same Commonwealth Games Lenny Zappavinia fought at. Where he won the bronze medal. 
respect. He was always going to be a better pro, Lenny, than he, than he was an amateur, and he was an excellent amateur. Always good to watch Lenny in the amateurs. Saw him in some great fights. Back! Let it go, let it go, let it go. Box! You can just see in Cesare, he's got that amateur background, that amateur pedigree about him. He, he's very slick, nice and neat around the outside. Nice work there from Cesare. Yeah. Finishing the exchange strongly. Yeah, the defence part of it was probably the, the best part. He just tucked that chin in nice and tidy. Nothing could get through. Good body shot there from Lenny Zappavinia. It was worn well by Reven. Look at that jab. Beautiful jab from Cesare again. Popping out the left hand. Caught Zappavinia with the right. Despite the fact he's on the back foot and he appears to be in trouble. That's not the case for Reuben Cesare. Not all the time. Ah, it's just how he fights anyway. Yep. He could be winning the fight in, in full control. He'll, he'll still move around the outside of the ring. It's his style. Lenny Wales went away. Nice head movement from uh, Ravan Cesare. And he just marking up a bit more under that eye and certainly no stranger to cuts and bruises around the eyes, Lenny. A couple of subtle changes, perhaps in the style of Lenny Zappavinia here. Oh, nice fast jab from Zappavinia. Back down goes the left hand, though. Yeah, dangerous, isn't it? Last hands from Lenny. Good head movement from Master uh, there. Nice body attack. Always the case. Lenny Zapovinia. Rip him with the right underneath that left elbow. We've followed the career of Lenny Zappavinia for some years here on Fox Sports. And if we wind the clock back to October 2010. Ji Hoon Kim, the IBF lightweight title eliminator. What a night that was for Lenny. Well, not a, what a night for Australian boxing that was. An amazing night, but this was round one, and Zabavinia just brutal and beautiful. And when you, when you, when you go in combos like big talk, please. Second half Number of five. the fight Box. begins. Wipe that water, guys. Wipe the water. Lenny Zabavinia, Reuben Cezanne. Oh, well to wait. Some heavy hands to start the second half of the fight. Yeah, Lenny caught the left hook, but he didn't catch the right hand from Cezanne. Oh, left hook from Cezanne. He Jeff, caught that one. Jeff Horn. Is the current national welterweight champion Lenny Zappavinia ranked one, Sam Columban two, and Reven Cesare at four. Gee, it is a super strong division in Aussie boxing currently. Yeah, it's really in the last year or so that division really has warmed up. Back to the generation past with guys like Shannon Taylor, Stefan Scriggins, Julian Holland, and and such welterweight division. Historically, a pretty strong one in Australian boxing. I saw him earlier, the fighting farrier, Julian Holland. Here in the venue, come along to support the boxing. Nice counter from Cesare. You're also here for the beer, I think. <laughs> yeah, probably more so that. Oh, good shot. Lenny may be hurt. It was a real good shot from Ruben Cesare over the top. Focus now on Zappavinia's legs. Are they still under him? A little bit of him wobbly. 
Bit of a nick under the right eye too of Lenny. That was a good shot from Cesare. Reeven's not a power puncher. No. So he's caught him cleanly. Shows that how important timing is with what these guys are doing. Lenny's snapping out the left hand. Yeah, it's a real good point, timing. Just one fine word and then you don't have to be the biggest puncher. There is guys that, you know, are just okay. You might put a knockout here or there, but you land the shot in the right spot. Anyone can go down. Reach advantage of five centimetres to Reven Cesare. It's not a lot in anyone's term. And it may sound silly, but he is using it very well. Zappa yep. Vigna is missing by the barest of margins on so many shots. Cesare is right there at range. Yes, yeah, Cesare's movement also helps that. He, he's got good movement upper body. He just rocks with the punch. He uses his feet very well, which is, is a really big asset. And um, we've said it before on here, feet is also defense. You drop the back foot out as your opponent starts his attack and it puts him out of range. Cesare does it a lot. Lenny there it is. Winding up the stance and just lowering it a little bit. Corner of Lenny's Abervinia, Tommy McCurry going old school. Right. He's got the spoon. Get old the cold up spoon. Through, guys. We continue on. And he's Abervinia, Reven Cesare. Desperation. It's going to be a motivation here shortly. These guys know very even in this ring at the moment. He seems to have some luck with that right hand over the, the low left of Lenny Zappavigna. He's also now looking at a counter left hook. You see Lenny's front hand, backhand, sorry, just as he punches, sometimes comes in the front of his face. Cesare tries to hook off with it. He attempted there, but well done by Lenny. So he'll try and use that front hook, the left hand to just come around the back glove of Lenny. Don't hold him, don't hold him. Oh, down the pipe. Oh, good work from Lenny. Yep. Super work from Zappavinia. Still in that centre ring position, determining which part of the ring the fight takes place in. It gives Zappavinia confidence. Just sort of showed that, you know, you're always watching for your opponent what, what works, what doesn't work. Lenny put about three or four punches together and finished up the middle this time and not around the outside. And it was the shot up the middle that scored. So maybe it's something to work on. Like we said, he's pretty hard to tag, Cezanne. Cezanne here, one of our real good domestic boxers and national, former national champion. Corey McConnell has decided uh, to move on to the next chapter in his life. And it doesn't include lacing up every couple of months and having a crack centre ring to the baby Hulk. We wish you all the best in the next part of your life, buddy. He's uh, going to take over from the Phantom, Greg Walker. And, uh, he'll be good, it'll be good for him. He'll learn a lot more, actually, as a, as a coach. And I uh, wouldn't be surprised if one day we see those gloves go back on. Nice body work from Lenny. But again, it's predominantly with the left hand. From Zappavinia, digging in with the lead hand. Not so much his power hand. Back of his head. 
He's always always been known as a good body puncher, Lenny. Which a lot of time his left his left rip will be shot that he'll go downstairs with. Some nice body work in there from Lenny. He's tightened that guard up a little now. That other eye, the right eye now starts to close up a little. He'll need two spoons in there, Tommy McCurry. Round number six is complete. We've got six minutes or two rounds remaining. Here's what went on in round number five, or six. You watch the body work from Lenny Zapovinia. Works his way in. Nice tight defense from Cesare. Not much of an opening for Lenny up top, so he digs downstairs. Good defensive work from Cesare at the same time. Business rounds coming up, round seven and eight. How are you scoring it at home? How close have you got it? Who have you got on top? Is it Cesare? Is it Zapovinia? Our three ringside judges. Alan McColl and Ika Williams and Tony Moretta. They appear to be the three that will be determining this. Oh, good footwork from Ravan Cesare. One thing I've just picked up is uh, the old Costa Zoo trait, rat's tail, yes. has disappeared from Lenny. You saw that throughout most of his professional career. On a four-fight win streak, Lenny Zapovinia. Nice left, left hook from Lenny, but great work on the outside by us there. Of course, we've got Blake Caparello fighting for the IBO light heavyweight title later tonight. Lenny, former IBO champion himself. Oh, good shots from Sevilla. Yeah, in the height of his career, Lenny, that was. I'm sure he wants to get back there and obviously why he's on the comeback trail and four fights into it. I see no reason why he can't yeah, I at 25 years of age. He's a, a real talent, this kid. And look, fights like this, you know, well, I guess it's what Cesare's trying to do as well. He's in against a really good name in Lenny, and um, he's trying to prove himself that he wants to go to that next level, and Lenny needs to try and beat guys like Cesare if he wants to get back up to where he was. Cesare's still looking very fresh, very slick. Lenny, nice, tight defence, much better. Lenny is loading up here. Yeah. Zoning in on the chin of Reuven Cesare. He might sense something. He's oh, Nick there's now. a huge cut underneath the right eye of Lenny Zapovinia, and it is pouring blood. Yeah, it won't worry Lenny at all. Nice counter work there from Cesare. You didn't even see Lenny flinch. I didn't even see where it came from. No, I didn't either. But it is dripping. Good to have a look in the replay. Stop! Time! Absolutely, we're gonna... Come here, come here, come here! Come here. Just wait over there. Shoelace. We're checking the shoelace, but not the cut. My guess is the cut's under the eye, so they're not overly stressed about it, but it is a hell of a cut. Cheekbones oh, out. Oh, hang on. My okay. guess is... We don't have our priorities quite yeah, right. I'm with you. What? That is a huge cut and it needs the the advice at least of Dr. Peter Lewis sitting ringside here. Yeah, you see the cheekbones protruding quite a fair bit. 
Back to the corners we go. Most interest in the corner is Zapovinia. There's just three minutes left in this one. Let's take a look at where this cut come from. Lenny's clean there. Left uppercut. Oh yeah, there it is. That's where it's from. Beautiful work from Revance is there. This will give us another good angle. Get a look. Yeah, exactly where it come from. Touch gloves. Point touch gloves. Point touch gloves. The doctor not called to the corner by the referee. Still between rounds 7 and 8 either. This is the final round here in the welterweight division. Lenny Zapovinia, Reven Cesare turned on a beauty. Uh, just warming us up for what is still to come on this edition of Big Time Boxing. Oh, good work from both guys. He's really impressed me tonight, Reven Cesare. Stepped up to that next level. Lenny's a tough opponent. Whether he wins or loses, he's put in a great performance. Three losses so far to Reven Cesare, Pat Rulo, Jordan G. Hoy and Casey Hannon. A hotly disputed decision back from the Gold Coast in 2010. An improving boxer. Yeah, I agree. Just needs to be a little busier, yep. I think. Yeah, that's true, yeah. He's certainly there. He's got the skills and he, he's picked Lenny off a fair bit tonight. Showed defensive skills as well, but I'm with you. Maybe a little bit more work. Nice left hand. Pushing it out there, even Cesare. Well, that cut's just opening up on Lenny. He's a fighter. He will not want to stop this. Won't want to look at it. Won't want to think about it. He's one of the toughest men in the sport, this guy. You'd actually go a long way to find one of Lenny's fights where he's not cut or marked yeah. up bad around the eyes. They're looking for the opening here. Just tapping away. Zapovinia just loads up and launches. Very different strategies from these two. Yeah, completely different. Differing strategies next Wednesday night. Sydney Entertainment Centre, Anthony Mundine, Shane Mosley. Live on Main Event TV and Fox Sports venues. Huge undercard as well. Hope you can join us. A cracker of a night. Yeah, I love it. I, lo I love the fact, you know, both guys are, are the twilight of their careers, 38 and 41 or 42. But to bring a name like, like Shane Mosley over, I think great work from Anthony Mundine and, and the guys who promoted it. Oh, great for Australian yeah. boxing. As we look back here and it's Lenny really chasing dancers there, really trying to get the last points in this fight. Both guys are going to walk out of here a little frustrated. Both have had opportunities, both have seen weaknesses, but neither has been really able to capitalise as best they would have liked. there the way he's moving maybe he thinks he's got a comfortable winner yeah. Yeah. Cesare raises the hands and heads back to the corner how important
Ladies and gentlemen, before we go to the judges' scorecard, a big round of applause to both fighters for a fantastic contest. After eight rounds of action, we go to the judges' scorecard. Alan McConnell and Eagle Williams and our third judge all had at 76-75. Your winner by unanimous decision, Blue Corner, Leonardo Zappavinia. Lenny Zappavinia, victorious by unanimous decision. And even Lenny looked a little surprised. Well, he was clapping for his opponent. He thought his opponent got that, and he was clapping for his opponent's victory. And Reuben Cesare very disappointed, headed back to the dressing rooms. But Lenny Zappavinia now five fights. Tommy McCurry. They go back to Sydney with a W in the column. Next time, we are punching our way into your lounge rooms it is Thursday, the 7th of November. Brett W. Smith against former NRL star Joey Williams. A belter of a fight. So too the Australian title, Nathan Carroll, Dennis Hogan. What about this? The rematch is on. Brent Elliott, Waylon Law. If you haven't seen the first one, the second one, oh boy, it's worth watching for that alone. That is live at 8 p.m. Fox Sports 3, Thursday, November 7. More immediately, though, the vacant WBA International Light middleweight title is on the line. It doesn't matter about the title. It matters about the fight. Sugar Shane Mosley, the legend, up against the man, Anthony Mundine. It is next Wednesday night, live at half past seven, main event TV, and Fox Sports venues, the only place where you can see all the action. Plenty of action still to come on this edition of Big Time Boxing. After the break, the PABA light welterweight title.
of the evening, let's go to Perry. Semi-main event of the evening, live from Melbourne, Australia. Proudly brought to you by the ABD Group. Introducing first, the challenger for the PABA title, a former two-time PABA champion himself. His opponent, the reigning and defending PABA champion. Please welcome the Cesar of Bohol, Cesar Amonson. event of the evening 12 by 3 minute rounds it is for the PABA light welterweight title proudly brought to you by the ABD group when he actually begins our referee in charge is Mr. Tony Moretta and our judges at ringside Ignatius Vissalides, Alan McCall and Anika Williams firstly Tamara fighting out of the red corner the challenger trained by Tony Nobbs from the NNG gymnasium official weight 63.4 kilograms standing 5 feet 9 inches tall tonight wearing the black silver blue white and red fight shorts he is a former two time two time PABA title holder fighting out of Jakarta Indonesia the challenger 20 fights 15 wins 8 by way of knockout please welcome Stevi Ongen Ferdi Nandas and his opponent to my left fighting out of the blue corner the champion trained by Todd Macklin from out west a fight club official weight 63.3 kilograms standing five feet seven and a half inches tall tonight we're in the black fight shorts with the bronze trim fighting out of Campbelltown New South Wales the reigning and defending PABA light welterweight champion 30 fights 24 wins three draws 14 by way of knockout the Cesar of Bojo please welcome Cesar Amor so fighters to centering please for final instructions Now, gentlemen, 12 rounds of boxing title fight, okay, boys? Obey my instructions, but at all time, defend yourselves at all time. Good, clean fight. Back to your corners, good luck to both of you. Having a look at these two fighters, it looks like there could be auditions for extras. Mad Max beyond Thunderdome later tonight. A couple of crazy looking dudes. I'd love to have hair to plant or play. Yeah, those days are long gone for you. It Mr. is Raymond. the PABA light welterweight title, 63 and a half kilo, 140 pound, or right on 10 stone. Stevie Ferdinandis and Caesar Amonson. Ferdinandis in the silver, Amonson in the black. Ferdinandis challenger, Amonson champion. Two lefties again, as we saw last time with Amonson, with Stevie Wills.
12 rounds the journey here. Ferdinandis comes to us with 20 fights, 15 victories, 8 knockouts. Watch the head. Nice. He's got a nice long right hand, uh, Fernandez. Nice and long, good long reach. Very big light world away. Cautious, careful. A calculated start from these two guys. Fernandez, a late starter to the world of professional boxing, debuted in 2009 and has had 20 fights since. So he's been very active. Monsant debuted way back in 2004 in his hometown then of Cebu City in the Philippines. He's now based down in Campbelltown, southwestern Sydney. Monsot thinking about switching up there to Orthodox, decided against it. Yeah, I think Monsot's still trying to work him out. Fernandez, Fernandez sorry, is, is pretty happy to get this ball rolling. Good right hand. He looks all right, Fernandez. Oh, Monsot. Very, very long stance and wide stance of Fernandez. For the lead hook there, Fernandez. Comes with big wraps. The former two-time yeah. holder of this title. It's five and one in Pabba title fights. Five wins, one loss. That one loss was to Sydney sider Rob Whaley. Watch this one wind up. Oh, Fernandez, he, he had a go. Cesare on the attack. Nice counter shot as the left hand stays low of Cesare. Oh, uh, sorry, Amonso. Nice counter work from Fernandez. Toddy Maclem in the corner. Caesar Amonsot in blue corner. Amonsot in the black two. trunks. Box. It's quite tough coming off saying, saying uh, Cesare for eight rounds straight into Caesar. Mm. Two lefties go at it. Long punches, wide open stance, but they're free flowing gloves at the moment of Ferdinandis. Yeah, I'm impressed with this guy, the Indonesian. He's Fernandez. Good long rangey fighter. Oh, and he gets caught there. Kept the right hand low and a nice left hand from Amonson. Quick on the counter is oh. Stevie. That was a solid left hand from Stevie uh, Fernandez as he wails away now. Almost a minute into round number two. A little busier this round so far, but still very much just trying to figure each other out. Amon Sot and Ferdinandis. Not committing to his shots, not loading up as Caesar, which is a real good sign for the boxer in black trunks. Yeah, I think you, you see the, the right hand of Ferdinandez when he throws that jab. If I was Cesar, jab the chest. We know he's got the power in that left hand. 
and that's what I'll be trying to follow back that uh, that low right hand of Fernandez. There it is. There, jab to the chest or the shoulder. Follow it over with the left hand. Showing his skills now. I'm on side. Right. Step back, boys. Step back, clean. Well done. Oh, body shots from a monsat. Yeah, probably smart way to go. The long torso, the long frame of Ferdinandes. Long torso is off-putting, isn't it? It is. Watch your head, right? Watch your head, Stevie. Watch your head up. Let's go. Long torso also. Look, uncommon. It provides Keep a bigger up, target up, area. Up, up. Yeah, well, you're exactly right, and then you know that's probably the smarter work from the Monson is to is to target that area early on. Looks like a very handy boxer, Ferdinandez. So hit that bigger target zone. Right, step back. Wow, oh, look at that sharp jab. Very good jab from Stevie. Really like to see Caesar maybe down a little further and coming through and up. Ooh. Ooh. Oh. Oh. Straight in the Niagara's, that was. Yeah, that was pretty bad. Don't know if he's calling for a doctor or one of the ring card girls. He's asking, he's asking Nobsy for some help. I'm not sure what Nobsy's going to do over there in the red corner. Yep. 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 Five minutes. He's got. He does he's have got five, five minutes, minutes here. Time now, okay. As males all round Australia yeah, just cross their legs. Yeah, yeah, I'm still. Uh, yeah, yeah. I'm hurting Stay over up. here looking at Stay him. There. He's got five minutes of injury time. If I was a betting man, I'd say we're not going to see any more here. No, he's asking for help from somebody. I'm not sure what he's doing. Okay, let's take a look at this shot. Oh, oh yeah, that is an uppercut. Yeah, he didn't get the left one. He didn't get the right one. He went straight in the middle. Oh, oh yeah. And you know, I've tried to explain to people about this. You got your cup on, but sometimes, without getting too far into detail, the cup can squash the boys. And when the shot comes up, like it did there, it would just be excruciating. You see a lot of guys milk it when the shot goes straight on. There's not much in that, but when a shot like that happens, oh my God, I feel sorry for Stevie Ferdinandez. He is in all sorts of pain at the moment. He's not only going to have to check them, but he's going to have to count them. Mate, he's... Oh. Dr. Peter Lewis there. Tony Nobbs. And all this time, Cesar Amonso. A lonely figure in the neutral corner. Yeah, look, something Cesar's got to be careful of. He doesn't want to stand around and hopefully Ferdinandez will be right once his time's up. But he doesn't want to get cool sitting over there for five minutes either. Let's take a look at, uh, while we're waiting, at Cesar Amonsot's last outing against Stephen Wills. He caught Wills with this shot on top of the head. It Wilsey was all over the shop. It was an aggressive display by Caesar Amonso. Yeah, somehow Wills got through that. And the next one is pretty much identical. Catches him on top of the head. And she's all over. Here it is here as we have a look at it. There it is. Brave effort from Stephen Wills. 
Good news. Fernandez is on his feet. He's going to go again. Good on you, Stevie. at Caesar. I remember one time a fair few years back now as Caesar stands in a still position. Vic Darchinian over in America fighting for a world title decided not to stand around his trainer. Jeff Fanick made him get up, get moving whilst his opponent sat down. They got one minute now. One Vic Darchinian, the, the fight changed from that yep. time on and Vic Darchinian came home and had a, had a big knockout victory whilst he was in a bit of trouble before the fireworks had gone off. Just trying to establish also what the referee's ruling is here. Look, it was accidental. It's unfortunate, but it was accidental. And you see Stevie pull the head down of Caesar as he goes, which also played into it. Yes, unfortunate. Unfortunate and accidental. accidental. That is the official ruling from Tony Moretta. Got a few tweets coming to and we apologise for the music that's just been playing here at uh, the Pavilion. Absolutely unacceptable. When the pictures and the sound are going nationwide, trying to attract a bigger audience. And we continue and our congratulations go to uh, Stevie Ferdinandis who copped a, a horrific low blow, unintentional. Yeah, certainly so. Good good right hook from uh, Ferdinandez, and he's taken his chances. I didn't think we'd see him back out. Head him up. Well, look, he's, he's gone on the inside. He's after Caesar. He's, Caesar's upset him, that's for Come sure. Up. Oh, as he digs one down low, a bit Watch of payback. It. First warning, low blow, OK? First warning, no accidental. You OK, Steve? Don't see. You OK, Steve? You all right? You all right? No more. That one didn't look as accidental. All right, you go. No, that's you like to go, Paul okay. again. It gets square. Let's go. Stevie's trying to suggest that there was nothing in it. I think Caesar probably begs to differ. Seeing a bit, a little bit of everything here in rounds two and three. Into round number three with two minutes remaining. I'm impressed with the style of this Indonesian yeah. Ferdinandez. Always love watching Cesar Monson. Nice long right hand from Ferdinandez. Oh, good counter shot from Ferdinandez. Oh, Monson. Powerful. Bye! Step back. Come on, step back, come on. Let's go. Halfway through the third, a couple of left-handers, a couple of southpaws no going at it no here. Holding. No holding! And as unintentional as everything has been as they have fought their way through, what it does add, it adds emotion. Yep. And a bit of feeling to the fight. We saw that emotion, we saw that feeling, especially from come Ferdinandes. On, come on, come on, come on, come on. Start of the third round. It always helps the you know, people watching get brought into the fight a lot more and makes it interesting, that's for sure. He's trying to move his way back out to the centre of the ring. That's where Caesar is. Undeniably Ooh. at his best, two good shots with that long lead hook from hey, Ferdinandus. Hey, hey, First warning too. First warning. Let's go. These two are going to go south, headbutt and forearm each other. 
Yeah, anything can go on in nine here. rounds. Another little bit low from uh, Cesar Amontop. So a couple, couple of low blows over the course of the last couple of rounds. The bell, the bell rings as Tony Nobbs and one of the dancers still exiting. I, there was not much in that one. I just think it slipped down off the jab. Come on, boys, come I'm on. I'm not sure what he's telling Caesar there. Gonna take points off. Good jab from Ferdinandez. Monsot launching himself there. Mozart needs to throw that one-two a lot more. That's the shot where he's going to get that left hand over the right hand of uh, Stevie Ferdinandez. He's got that centre part of the ring pegged, hasn't he? Yeah. Stevie. There's no use, uh, I guess, if you say you've got a, a, you know, he's got a good height and reach advantage. And he uses it excellent. Yeah, holds right. the centre of the ring right. with it. Well, up, so uses that up. long jab. Eight and two in his last ten fights, Ferdinandis. Right. No holding. Seven, no one holding. and two, Amonsot in his last ten. Probably best remembered for his amazing battle with Mick Katsidis for the WBO interim world lightweight title in 2007 in Vegas. Yeah, you go a long way to see something better than right. that. Amazing fight well, between well, Amonsot well, well, and Good. Mick Katsidis. We've had Mick spend a bit of time for us the last week or so in Brisbane. He's on the comeback trail. Says things are all clear and he's ready to go. Hey. Trying to just change back, the boys. angle there, but back. the feet and hands weren't in sync for Monsite. Stop, stop. How long his legs are? This right. guy fell out the side of the okay. ring. Man, man, okay. All right, let's go. Fuck. The Monsot can maintain his power and his work rate. He may well be able to break down the slighter frame of Stevie Ferdinandis. A little easier than what Ferdinandis can do to a Monsot. Well, one thing we know about Amonson, he's mentally yeah, tough. No, he's physically on. tough. We can see that Ferdinandez is quite a handy boxer. But how mentally strong is he? So if I was, if I was uh, Amonson, that would be my plan, would be just try and break him down. But I would probably pick the work rate up a little and just try break him down. Break the confidence out of him. Oh, good yeah. counter work. He's able to accelerate pretty well. Yeah. The inside there, Ferdinandis.
And we are ready to continue. Round five. Feels like it's been going all night, Ferdinand and Amonson, after that uh, five-minute rest period for an accidental low blow under the no-foul rule a little earlier. Had effectively a six-minute gap between rounds. Yeah, it uh, slowed things up, that's for sure. Oh, sharp, sharp punches from Fernandez. Nice long left-handed fighter. A lot like our Australian Jamie Pittman, Mr. Business, the long left-handed fighter. Oh, both guys just about got each other. Both firing at the same time. Long hands and long arms, should I say, of Ferdinandis proving the difference there. He's a nice handy boxer, Ferdinandes, but he's also a good counterfighter. You see, sometimes he takes a backward step like that as uh, Monson comes in, then fires a quick three or four nice sharp shots as he tries a, one of those long right uppercuts he has. Nice left hand from uh, Monson. Hey! Step back. Up next, the IBO Light Heavyweight Championship of the World. Blake Caparello, Australia. Alan Green, the United States of America. That is our main event. Blake seemed nice and calm and seemed to have his mind up, set on the job in the yeah. interview you did with him. Absolutely, he did. Seemed and very focused. Yeah, it's something that I think he'll really need to be. You know, there's, there's a bit of probably mind games ahead there with three kilograms you know, weight limit, that also. But he goes, well, okay, Alan Green can't win the title. Yep. He's still got to stay focused and stick on his game plan and try and get this title. Kickboxing legend, former K1 star, professional wrestler with WCW back in the day, and actor slamming Sammy Greco in the house with us. Join the action from ringside. Nice uh, double jab there from Lamonson. He needs to fire something off it. <laughs> Certainly not the fight some were suggesting or expecting this one. Certainly hasn't panned out to be all action sometimes you get two handy boxes and uh, they just don't want to get right into it tap up again into the round as we go back to the corners Here's a bit of round number five. What's the counter work from Ferdinandez? Moves on the back foot. Nice counter work. Good defense too from the Monson. Good skills. Seconds out. Corners. Back into it we go. Stevie Ferdinandez, Caesar Amonso. Box. Round six. Round number six. Now scheduled for 12. Oh, this is what we want. Now both guys center ring trading. And Great. both having success. Monsot loves those uppercuts. Watch Especially from the lead hand. Yeah. Stop! Boys! The head! Stevie! The head! Watch the head! Let's go! Fernandez more comfortable longer with his punches. Provides quite a unique mix. Break! Step back. Doubling up the right hand. But defensively, though, was Ferdinandis. 
Yeah, Monson's got to be careful. As he throws punches a lot of times, his hands are staying down low, and it's Fernandez, as we've seen, has got a good counter shot. And Monson, we know he's got a good chin, but we don't want to see it tested here tonight. After Zapovinia, Cesare, and the Hamono knockout in the opening fight, the room has gone very flat. Yeah, look, that happens. You've got two out-of-towners. You've yep. got a Sydney fighter against an Indonesian fighter, and sometimes on the night that, you know, people are here to watch their mates fight, and, yeah. and that's the way it goes. If they keep continuing like the manner they've done here in round number six, a few more people might... Jump in and have a look. Just over a minute left in round number six. Tricky little wide up cut from Ferdinandes. Yeah. No holding. Come on, fight out of it. Don't go hold. No holding. Both guys have been very active over the last couple of months. Last out on September 12 this year was Cesar Ramon, so it last out August 30 this year for Stevie Ferdinandez. So both been busy, both in good physical condition. Yeah, you can see that in both fighters as well. They're both, you know, uh, towards the end of round number six, no one seems real tired. Long punch there from Stevie. <laughs> Looks impressive throwing combinations because of those long arms. Yeah, it certainly does. Oh, second morning. Second morning. Second morning. Let's go. All right. Ouch. Another warning here. Right. Time has been called. Go, Steve. I think they can only get it. Come on. Come on. Well, he's saying he can't go on. No, he's no good, right. I think. Neutral corner. Say that. Neutral corner. It's time, Ferdinandez. You want to go on? Okay. Okay. Let's have a look at this Let's slow blow. Oh, He's down there morning. again, yeah. Let's take a moment, okay? That is another real bad one. Fernandez having a chat to Brent for Carly here. Said he doesn't want to continue. We're trying to talk him back into it. There's a few question marks here in the semi-main event. Yeah. Right. David, come on, mate. We've got to get going now. Yeah, you're almost gone. It's almost it's round. It's just, it's just, it's just, it's just it's nearly over. Oh, let's get into the corner. Into the corner. Okay. Let's go, Stevie. Doesn't seem to be in a deal of pain. Seems to be in a deal of discomfort. I'm going to call it in. And right. Right. Understandably Time. so. Box. Stop. End of round six.
Ferdinand is back out for the round. Slowish fight, but often the case with two out of towners. A fight where the local crowd, the TV audience to a large degree, just doesn't engage. You can't get excited about what either corner or both corners, whatever the equation is. Uh, uh, that's in no disrespect to these two guys who are elite level boxers and two tough, tough dudes. Two very talented dudes too. Yeah, but it, it, look, at the end of the day, it's, it's the truth. You know, you take two Australians and you put them in. I remember going over as a perfect example to Thailand. Uh, we took maybe five or six boxers over from our gym. They fought at uh, Lumpini Stadium before the Thai boxing. The Thai boxers nearly fell asleep watching them. But the second that the Thai boxers come out, they ripped the roof yeah. off the stadium. And it's pretty much the same as what we're seeing here. We saw some excitement in, in uh, Ravan and Lenny, and then and obviously the solo KO. And the crowd just haven't bought into this one as much. I like what Todd Maiklin said in the corner. Be careful how low you hit him. You hit him in the sternum, he'll claim it's low. Well, let me tell you, Todd, the two that hit him are extremely low. Yeah. They were nowhere near the sternum. Uh, as, as low as reckless. Right. Step back, Hines. Step back, Hurtful as you've yeah, seen for a while. I found it funny, the corner and the ref are saying, come on, Stevie, you've got to fight on. Well, Stevie was the one who took the shots. Of awkward holding, often the case when you do get a couple of lefties, and that was borderline yeah. too. Well, nice combinations here from Amonson, good counter from uh, Ferdinand. I've got to say, I'm half astounded and stunned that no points have been oh. taken off uh, for the low shots against Caesar Amonson. Yeah, we've, we've probably seen three or four good low blows from Caesar, and then obviously the one that looked pretty intent from uh, Fernandez as well. I mean, how many times we've we seen fights where there hasn't even been a warning? Stop! 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 Come on, keep your head up. Don't put, don't put your head down, okay? Go! Go! Fight! We finished the round. Get back, keep your head up, stop here. holding. Both guys have got a heap more to give. You can sense. Boys getting ready to do their thing as they Round come back out. Round number eight, we are scheduled for 12. There hasn't been anything as yet that would suggest that we're going to be stopping Stop anytime soon. No. By a knockout, maybe via another low blow. Yeah, that's right. Well, both fighters have got a, you know, decent KOs and both fighters yes. have been knocked out before, so the ingredients are there, but... I don't know if the guys are taking the chances needed. We saw a little bit of it at the start of round number seven. Go boys, let's go. Hopefully we'll see a bit more of it here in round number eight. Oh, good footwork and good counter from Ferdinand. Just Step fell back. short. Stop the holding, James, come on. I'm on something working on the back foot. My guess is he's going to try and draw on 
Fernandez to that left hook. As he now gets drawn back on the front foot. One thing I like, Fernandez, very tall opponent, can probably mistakenly keep his legs pretty straight, but he, he sits down nice and low, and that's why he looks nice and snappy when he punches. Still keeps his legs bent, his back knee bent. Doesn't matter how tall you are, that's where your balance is, that's where your power is. Nice left hand from Amonson. Keep your head up. Keep your stay. Keep your head up, mate. Come on. Keep your head up. Minute 13. Reigning round number eight. Come on, Sock the Black. Fernandez in the silver. No great tempo and momentum to the fight. In terms of continued attack anyway. Yeah, I believe they, they've both got a fair bit they could lift up. Nice counter work from Fernandez. This is what we need. Yes. Caesar's holding on. And still wants to hold on. Caesar, stop holding. Usually means that... Oh, good left hook from Fernandez. Usually means you've been hurt a little. Fight out of it, boys. Come on, fight out of it. Come on, come on. Stop the holding. Final seconds around number eight. A couple of attempts to lift the pace from both oh, guys. Nice left straight hand. left hand from Ferdinandis. Second ranked challenger in the Pabba ladder. Get him round, mate. We're going the distance here, but it's a venue known for its knockdowns. Dominic Shukin. What about this to start our comp off? Oh, wow. Isn't oh. that a beauty? Yeah, that was a big upset that night too. Yeah. What about this one from Blake Caparello? Oh, Latoa. Oh, man, and the, the big thing about that one is Blake just got off the canvas not long before that, that knockdown. Maybe the best is the last one. Brad Pitt, Daniel Lamar. What Pretty easy to pick. A straight right Sorry, hand. Down. As good as it gets. Wipe the floor, thanks. Wipe the floor. Thanks. Oh, floor. last Daniel Lamar. Bounce back and regain that a title. Now. Back to the PABA light welterweight title. 12 rounds. Slowly getting there. Cesar Monson is the champion in the black chunks. Trunks Stevie Fernandez, the challenger in the silver trunks. They're still with us, our main event. Blake Caparello, Aaron Green, Aaron, Alan Green, IBA light heavyweight title coming up immediately following this match. Nice right hook from Lamonso. Come on, oh, that's better. That's what Amonson needs to do. Work behind the right hand. Throw the left hand straight the over the low the hand, low hey. lead hand, I should say, of Ferdinandez. Stop the holding, Stop the holding. As Ferdinandez did in the previous round to Amonson with the one-two. Stop working around the outside of the ring now. On the back foot. Fernandez propped and dropped the jab in. Yep. 
Nicely executed, wasn't it? Yeah, and Monson walked straight onto it. It was good balance from Ferdinandes. Stop! Right! Come on! Right! After showing us what he showed us last start just a month ago, Cesar Monsot hasn't been able to, in my opinion anyway, maintain that momentum. Uh, it comes down to styles of fights, and, yeah. and today we just haven't seen the, an aggressive Cesar Monsant that we saw right. on that night with Stevie get Wills. Back, get back, get back, come on. Good double jab. That's much better from Ramon side. There it is. Nice jab. Good head movement from uh, Fernandez. Tall, rangy Indonesian. Still a bit friendly after nine rounds. The desperation going to lift. Round number 10, just nine minutes, three rounds remaining in our semi-main event. Then it is main event time. IBO, light heavyweight title, Alan Green, Blake Caparello. Fernandez dropped. Three, four, With a little five, smile on the face. Six, seven, eight, nine. Oh, he's not getting up. Ten. That's it. That's it. Lights right off. He knew it was yes. too. He didn't want to get back up. He uh, took the easy option out there. Yeah, he was ready to go. He'd had enough. Right hook from Cesar Amonson. Probably well due, uh, well overdue that. Caesar Monson remains victorious. Oh, re remains on his winning way, should I say. Probably wasn't the hardest shot of the night. Just an accumulation. Nice straight lead right hand a jab. Yeah. A jab. I thought it was a hook at first, but look, probably. It was certainly not a bad shot, that's for sure, but he seemed like he could have got up, but maybe he'd done his work, Ferdinandez. Seems okay at the moment. Ferdinandez and a couple of opportunities to retire early. Looked like he was going to, decided against didn't show any great haste to get up off the deck after being firmly jabbed yeah, by Caesar and Monson. Let's go centering. Time for Perry to make it official. Ladies and gentlemen, referee Tony Moretta puts a stop to this contest. 44 seconds into the 10th round. He went by TKO and still PABA champion Cesar Bohol. Caesar Amonsot victorious. That means it is main event time right here on Big Time Boxing. Coming up, it is the IBO Light Heavyweight 
Championship of the World. The title vacant, Alan Green from the United States and Aussie Blake Caparello. That's up next on Big Time Boxing. Inside, please. Aaron and Jace are inside, thank you. Welcome back to Big Time Boxing. A mixed semi-main event. Cesar Amonsite and Stevie Ferdinandis. Some low blows early. But a jab finished the night. Ferdinandis quit while down. Wanted no more. It brings us to our main event is the IBO Light Heavyweight Championship of the World. The title is vacant. Alan Green weighed in over the limit 24 hours ago. He cannot win the title tonight. Blake Caparello, the undefeated Aussie, can. 18 fights, 17 victories, 6 knockouts and ready to fulfil a dream. Green is 34 years of age, Caparello just 27 and such a bright future in front of him. As far as height and reach is concerned, three centimetres advantage on the arms to the Aussie. It's a right-hander versus a left-hander. The American Green a right-hander, the Aussie Caparello a southpaw. Let's take a look at the former champions, or some of the former champions in this division, in this organisation. Jean Pascal, based in Canada, who Blake Caparello has been over sparring in preparation for tonight. Some legends there, the, the great man, Bernard Hopkins, Roy Jones Jr., Antonio Tarver, Glenn Johnson. There are some absolute beauties. Some of the biggest names in the sport have put this belt around their waists. Will Blake Caparello get his chance to join that list here tonight? And is the light heavyweight titles around the world, Adonis Stevenson? Shumanov, Kobolev, and the 48-year-old Bernard Hopkins. Still doing it and doing it well, Chris. Yeah, amazing that this man is still doing what he is today. It's uh, obviously lives a good, clean life outside the ring. 
What can you say about Bernard Hopkins? Amazing. What can you say that hasn't been said previously? Seems there is an issue out the back at the moment with Alan Green. Not wanting to come out to centre ring. Well, I'll tell you what, he certainly won't have any friends left in here. He yeah. hasn't got any at the moment. Uh, well, weighing in almost three kilograms over the limit 24 hours ago. In an er earlier interview, if you didn't catch it with me live tonight, explained that he had a pre-existing medical condition of some four years that limited his weight loss. Question is, why are you competing at light heavyweight if you don't think you can get down there? Then said he had three different sets of scales. He was fine on his two, but the ones he weighed in on were different, were different. or out of whack. And now he's not interested in coming out at the moment. So we wait. Caparello, last time out, uh, majority points win over one of our favourite fighters and the very tough Daniel McKinnon. Right here from factories. Yeah, he is one. I really do enjoy watching McKinnon fight. I really enjoyed his fight with Bam Bam Mark Flanagan. I think what a lot of fighters don't realise is Blake is a very crafty fighter. He's very awkward and very long, and he's a lefty. The fighters seem to forget that and struggle with Blake's style. Think that they've got his measure, and they struggle. The wait continues. The wait for Alan Gr oh, it was first out, apparently ready, so let's go centering to Perry. Ladies and gentlemen, introducing first, fighting out of Oklahoma, USA, please welcome Ghost Dog, Alan Green. his opponent fighting out of Essendon Victoria and representing Australia the bomber Blake Caparello Melbourne Pavilion, would you please all be upstanding for, firstly, the National Anthem of US of A.
And now please remain upstanding for the Australian National Anthem. Ladies and gentlemen, tonight's bounce section by the Combat Sports Board of Victoria in association with the IBO. Board members, Bernie Barmer, Mick Ashton. Our recorders of tonight's fights, Dan Nichols and Simon Bisham. And our physician at ringside, Dr. Peter Lewis. Our timekeeper, Tom Davis. And IBO supervisor, Frank Hadley. Our judges at ringside, Adam Height, Australia. Dave Moridi, US of A, and Dan Ricks, Tapsadan from the Philippines. Proudly brought to you by Simmons Homes. And now, ladies and gentlemen, Melbourne Pavilion. Ladies and gentlemen, this is our main event of the evening. It is now time to separate the men from the boys for the IBO Light Heavyweight World Title. Ladies and gentlemen, are you ready? Without any further ado, ladies and gentlemen, it's fight time! Introducing first to my right, fighting out of the red corner, trained by Anthony Wilson from the Ghost Dog Gym. Official weight, 82.10 kilograms, standing six feet two inches tall. Tonight we're in the black shorts with a white trim. He's a five-time Oklahoma State champion and a 2002 US Golden Gloves champion. Ranked number five in the USA. Professional fighter, got a 36 fights, 32 wins, 22 by way of knockout. Please welcome Ghost Dog, Alan Green. And his opponent to my left, fighting out of the blue corner, trained by Sam Labruna from Team Labruna. Official weight, 79.25 kilograms, standing six feet one inches tall. Tonight we're in the black shorts with a grey trim. 18 fights, 17 wins, one draw, six by way of knockout. The current PABA light heavyweight champion, fighting out of Essendon, Victoria, and representing Australia. Please welcome the bomber, Blake. Capo Rello! Find us two centering please for final instructions. Red corner, blue corner, come here fellas. All right, I've already given you both your instructions in the dressing room. I'm going to tell you again. Obey my commands at all times, protect yourself at all times. Touch them up. Back you go, best of luck to you both. Good luck guys. Blake Caparello, can he manage the anger inside of him? This man, Alan Green, 24 hours ago, weighed in almost three kilograms over the agreed light heavyweight limit. In professional boxing, that is seen as the ultimate sign of disrespect. The IBO light heavyweight title is vacant. Alan Green can't win it. Blake Caparello can. Big boy, Alan Green. Very big. 12 three minute rounds. It is Green, the black and white. Caparello, the black with the white piping, silver piping. Right hander versus a left hander. When, Very we, say, when we say he's a big boy, we're not talking about just his tummy after weighing in three kilograms heavy. We're talking about overall size. He is a big fella. Certainly is. A, probably the plus out of that. You know, we don't really... Oh, the, that's the shot for Blake Caparello. I'll come back to what I was going to say, but Green a lot of times, when he does do his work, his chin comes up pretty high. So if I was Caparello, jab the chest, send the left hand over the top. Left hand to the body, right hand over the top. 
try and catch him out with that second shot. You see how side on green is, so at the moment the right hook's probably not the shot, but the left hook certainly is for Blake Caparello. What I was going to say earlier, you, you don't really get a, a, a look until now of, of Alan Green. And look, he's three kilograms overweight, but he doesn't look muscled up and he doesn't look ripped no. up. So he just, to me, looks like he didn't want to cut that last three kilograms of sweat or... Doesn't like the gym. Yeah, something. You know. Sit-ups. Yeah. Up until two days ago, he was four and a half kilos wow. over the limit. Uh, not an ideal cut, not a professional cut, a disrespectful cut. I think most Australians, judging by the reactions from fight fans both here in attendance and around Australia watching Fox Sports, those that have joined the conversation on Twitter are hoping Blake Caparello does his thing and in style. Who's there for the take in Alan Green? It's a good time for Blake Caparello. Green have been there, done it type of guy. He goes to the body with a couple of shots. Been in the ring with uh, you know, the Edson Mirandas, the Andre Wards, Glenn Johnson, Mikel Kessler. Nice left hand earlier on there from Caparello. Oh, yeah. And it staged that round play. He looked pretty comfortable yes. in what he thought that Allen would We're throw at him. Join the conversation at home or at your local on Twitter using the hashtag OzBoxing and let us know how you're scoring the fight round by round and your thoughts and impressions. Love to hear from you. Round number two coming your way, a vacant IBO light heavyweight title. Caparello, the southpaw, predominantly black trunks, green right hander in the black and white. Our man Danny did the right thing with a surname like green. You've got to have green in your gear. Yeah, that's for sure. It's good. I'm not sure what those trunks are made out of. For the ghost dog. Caprillo skirting the ropes here. Him back. A little more powerful position Keep here. Up. Position he's able to start the attack. Be the first. You can uh, you can see the experience of Alan Green. Very calm. Doesn't seem overawed with Blake style at all at this stage. Very big lad. Yeah, good work, Caparello. That's the shot. See what sort of work he has done in the gym. Dig away at the body. The body is going to be the target zone, you would think, for Blake Caparello on Aaron, Alan Green. Yeah, it was a nice work. He come around that front foot, opened up a good line because Green is so side on. And just gives you a perfect balanced spot to throw that left sort of hook into the body or to the head. Watch your feet in there, fellas. Yeah, smart work from Green. Caparello trying to set a trap at the moment. Green saw it coming. 
little bit of working out from both fighters. Oh. Here comes Caparello, launching into green, changing levels and doing so nicely. Ripping oh. to the body, slamming to the head and looking to finish it early. He senses something, Caparello. He's just got to stay smart. Up and cuts, rocking the head back of Alan Green. What's your head in there, Blake? What's With your each head? punch comes just a little bit more anger from Blake Caparello that he went through the torture of Stop. dropping Stop. weight. Yeah. Alan Green didn't. Stop. Blake, keep your head out of it, you understand? Box! Oh, nice, solid shot. Good defence, though, from Green. Great round for Blake Camarillo, an establishing round, a dominant round. Keep it tight. When he touches, you come back with something. Alright? How you feel? You alright? I know, but don't let him steal shit. Don't let the motherfucker get the face. You know what I'm saying? Don't let him get the face. Round two. Probably the best round so far. A little bit of the feet got caught up there, but a good round for Blake Caparello. He sent some damage. Whilst he's on the attack, it was good defence, though, from Alan Green. And you'll watch him try and counter one of Blake Caparello's shots. Just looking, just looking. Oh, that one got through for Caparello. You should have a little bit of confidence following that round, Blake Caparello. Made all the right noises. Comes out strong on his legs, clear in his eyes, though, Alan Green. Yeah, you, you heard him say in the corner when he went back, he's just warming up. His trainer said, don't let him steal the rounds. That's positive. You just, with a guy turning up on a world title fight, three kilograms overweight, you, you're just hoping he's here to fight. Nice short little right hand from Green. Sneaky left one from Caparello. Keep them up. Keep them up. Overextending there, Caparello. Opening minute of round number three. Once again. Circling the perimeter. This is what we see Blake do a lot of, and then he just props and he drops a left hand over. And you can see he's trying to set that same shot up, and there's one there. He went downstairs with it. Trying to do the same thing to Alan Green. Green's so side on that it almost, in some ways, limits his movement with his feet anyway. Yes, yeah, certainly. And it, it does it. it doesn't give Alan Green a chance to throw his right because he's so side on. But that's the shot there you've got to watch, the right hook. For Caparello, on the other hand, he'll struggle to get the straight left out, but it is a good line to open up the left hook. There's certainly positives and negatives for being so side on. Fighting on the inside and holding. Referee fabulous Phil Austin. Stepping in between the two and asking for a reset. Credit to Caparello's team. They've given him every chance possible to win this fight. Send him overseas. Break, 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 with John break. Pascal no, and boxing, back here boxing. with some of Australia's better fighters. And keep your head up in there too. Box. Good tall fighters, good rangy fighters. Dave Allure and yeah. Damien Hooper. Big Dave watching tonight as he always does forward to seeing him in action shortly. Right, yeah, I think back. he's on the Monday right. handicap. I bet he is. Okay, you're both, you're both contributing to it. And with guys like up, Zach guys. Awood, Jake Carr, yeah, what a Blake fight. Ferguson. Yeah, big Blake Ferguson. On debut. Nice lunging jab. Green oh. turns him round. 
Rose on the offensive. Caparello caught him with a nice left, yeah, they smile, they, they win, the and hit back to their corners. Round number three. You see, Green did not care. He didn't let Blake Caparello off. Caparello catches him with the left hook. Good work from Caparello to defend himself at all times. They touch gloves at the end of this. The first sign of respect we've seen in this fight so far. Go to red corner. Stop boxing. Blake Caparello at uh, 27 years of age. Box on. Okay. Watched him nice and tight over the face. last four years, let's red say. Corner, and uh, we've really seen his body mature from boy to man. Yeah, that's right. And looks as physically good and strong as, as I've seen him. Yeah, I agree on that. And early on in Blake's click, uh, career, we saw him, you know, quite aggressive and, and, you know, he did hurt a few people with that. Lately, he's been a bit more strategic. I'd like to see a good mix of that tonight. Yeah. Really let his aggression take over. This man's here to, for the taking. He's there for Blake Caparello to capture the IBO world title. Don't sit and wait for it. Punish him. Step back. That's the general consensus from those at ringside. Bit of an awkward left hand there from Caparello. Yeah. A lot of Blake's left hands are awkward. His power's in his left hook. Yeah. Straight left, because of the way he throws it, is a little bit awkward and sometimes off balance. But it's sneaky and it can get you, but the power's in the left hook. Undeniably the number one light heavyweight in the land, Blake Caparello. Yeah, good left hand from Caparello. Certainly, he's got the runs on the board. Not a bad division either, the light heavyweight division. Yeah, it is. Well, good aggression from Green. An attempted counter from Caparello. See Green trying to set up now. Looks to be setting up the right hook. There it is. Final minute now of round number four. Caparillo's shut out perhaps to date. Three rounds to nil. You work in there, fellas? Break! Break step back straight away, understand? You'd never know. No, not tonight, that's for sure. Snap there from Green. I agree with you in regards to the Aggression or lack of, at times, of Blake Caparello. I'd really like to see him bite down on his mouth guard and get mad. Yeah, I agree, yep. He's a placid guy outside of the ring, though. He's not He's not a hothead. He doesn't fire up. He's yeah, yeah. Calm, calm and cool. The night he fought Michael Bolling, I apologise to Bolling. We spoke about that this a few times, but he was aggressive and ready to go that night. Good shot from Caparello there. Just to give Green something to think about on the school. Very nice. 4 0 Blake Caparello, perhaps.
Come on, let's go. Time. Round number Time five Fox. coming your way. Not the busiest American import we've ever seen, Alan Green, and has a history of that. Yeah. You know, what he did uh, at the Wayne probably, yeah. you know, sort of can work that out. Isn't always an explosive, attractive fighter to watch, Alan Green? Look, the, go, the night that he there. fought uh, Jaden Codrington, oh, yeah, that's what we want to see. Absolutely. Bring that guy out. He was an animal. A KO in, in the first 20 seconds. He said he was going to do it, and he came out and did it. And did it beautifully, didn't yeah. he? Yeah, just went for it from the start. And, I think, why doesn't he do that more often? Set up the big shot and went whack. Most of the Aussies will remember the name, Jaden Codrington. You're holding out and Sakio don't Bika Had a good victory over him in the final of the uh, Contender yeah, Series in America. Yep. Just going back. Six or seven years now. Out there go. Already. Blake, get your hand out of there. Nice and close here, halfway through round number five. The action Brent, right Brent, there. Step back, just, just tidy up here, fellas. Yeah, good call from Sam LeBruner in the corner. What he's saying is get around him. He's meaning go around the front foot of Alan Green. That there, create an angle yep. and come in from a different angle and try and catch Green out because he's so side on. So come around that front foot with your front foot. Create another angle to come in from and try and catch out Alan Green. Green gets a little busier here, but didn't do it with any great deal of fluency or accuracy. Part of the big Super 6 tournament at Super Middleweight, Alan Green. Going back a few years. That culminated in his fight with Andre Ward. Yeah, Carl Frog was in there as yeah. well. Yeah, it was, wasn't bad around there. That was a good super middleweight time. Actually, nice left hand from Caparello. Well, title on the line, but they're smiling going. We continue on in the battle for the IBO Light Heavyweight title. If you've only just joined Round us and you haven't heard the news from the way in 24 you hours ago, Alan quicker. Green, from the black and white trunks from the United States, didn't weigh in under the limit. In fact, not even close. So he can win the fight here tonight, but he can't win the title. Blake Caparello, the Australian in the black with white or silver stripes did weigh in under the limit if he wins the fight he does win the title Chris at this stage I see no dangers coming from Alan Green that Blake Caparello needs to look out for no he's just got to stay focused though he, he seems in control Blake Caparello but you know, Green's been in the big Come fights in. and he's Great, an experienced fighter, so 
he seems to be now getting some sweat going and loosening up, pouring with that front hand. So he still want to stay really focused to get this title. There's little things you've got to be careful of every now and then from Alan Green. 32 wins, 22 knockouts for Alan Green. So he knows how to throw him. Make no mistake about that. Yeah, good left hand from Caprello. More KOs than uh, Blake's had fights. So a big step up for Caprello. It is a huge step up for Car Caparello and his team that over the years step included back. Charlie Liberata and but Sam Labruna have progressed Blake at a very sensible, logical, controlled fashion. Yeah, That's I agree. Yep. Yep. I, I remember speaking to Sam a few weeks back or a few weeks after this fight was matched and he just said, what are they going to do, sit around and wait? They need to throw him in and see where he's at. And a good opponent in Alan Green. A chance to win, but also very risky. Probably getting a bit tight in there for Caparello to land that power. Yep. Don't hold! This is better. It's a small Stop step boxing. out, Stop small boxing. bit of room. Needs to add a little bit of space for okay. himself. <laughs> Come here, both of you, for a second. Come here. If I'm telling you to do something, you're doing it straight away, you understand? If I tell you to stop, you stop fighting. Understand? And Alan, you've got to stop with the holding. No. You're the major culprit. Cut it out. You, cut it out. Time in. Box. 44 seconds remaining round number six. A very stern warning from fabulous Phil Austin. Looks scary there. Phil, I'd hate to be his kids at home. Uh, one of our better rest, Phil Austin. Can see the frustration building into this fight. Look in there. They sorted it out for a while, but back into a very similar position. Watch your heads. In round six. Boys coming back out for Ransom. the second half of this battle for the IBO Light Heavyweight Championship of the World. Blake Caparello, the Aussie, in complete control at the halfway point in the fight. What well, a nice counter. Yeah, it was a nice counter from Caparello, a two-punch combination. You see when Alan Green goes back, or he went back to the corner, he leaned over the ropes for a little bit, maybe indicating he's a little tired. If I was Caparello, I'd really pick up the next round or two. You're holding, Alan. Oh. Green showing his experience here. Working there. Tying up on the blind side or the far side to the referee so you're not getting pinged. Really leaning on Caparello, making him carry his body weight as well. Caparello countering nicely with a bit more aggression as well. Yeah, used the ropes there well, Caparello. Rocked back onto him. Gave himself a bit of room and chopped the right hook around. Two-punch combination from Caparello. And again from Caparello. Now Green may well have punched himself out here. That turn was a very loose one from Alan Green. He just resigned to the fact his back was going to be against the ropes. Yep. 
Caprello certainly looks the fitter and the fresher here. Oh, as he wails away two big bombs. Not well sure, spotted. Not sure who Blake was trying to hit there, but he wound him up. It was good work from Green. Good slip, good movement, and a couple of counters back. Right on top of it here. How close do you want to get? This is as close as you will get anywhere in the world. Having boxing in your lounge room. This could well be a defining round. It's energy sapping. This type of stuff. Now when Green's a little tired, he's very side on if I was Caprello, although he's caught back in. I'd be trying to get around that front foot and send the left hook around. It's Taylor May. Go around now. Go around the outside left hook. That there. He's just in a perfect spot for that shot. Oh, good combination from Green. Watch your hands in there, fellas. Watch your heads. Bashing away on the inside. Back against the ropes again, Caparello. In round seven. Round seven is now complete. Both fighters here working up against the road. Both guys having success. Watch your head in there. Watch your head in there, okay? Both of you. Caparello digs with the right hook. Let's go. All right. Round number eight, coming your way live on Main Event Boxing. Uh, big time boxing, should I say. Main Event Boxing next Wednesday night, Anthony Mundine versus Sugar Shane Mosley, a cracking undercard as well. Main Event TV and Fox Sports venues, the only place you can see all the action. Again, positive sign for the, the fight, I guess, that, you know, like I said earlier, you're just worried what Alan Green's here for. And, he indicated he thought he won that fight, uh, won that round. Um, and his, tr his trainer said, you know, you can't let him steal. And he said, but we got an American judge. So he is thinking of winning the fight still. I think it's a shutout. And I think at, at very worst, maybe Blake has lost one round. Yes, yeah, I agree. The, even an American judge, I don't think, could be favourable to Alan Green here tonight on this performance. Keep him up, keep him up. Not much in that, it come a little bit off the hand of, of Green. If Caparillo is quick enough with his lateral movement, he will be able to throw all sorts of angles at Al Green, who is so side on that he's really struggling moving when he's Caparillo comes round right, left to right, should I say. Yeah, it's there all day if Caparillo wants it. Oh, he's got to use his jab, but he's got to give him something to look at first. There's good work there from Green. Alan Green ranked 14 in the IBA. Blake Caparello 16. That's what the title's for tonight, to go to the top of that list with a rocket. Caparello's attempting to get outside that front foot. He knows that's where it is. Short right hand there from Green and fast hand combination. That was better. It's 
more than just the one for Caparello. Throw one, go around another one, throw another one. to get there. What? He's getting tired. But I don't want you to get silly. Yep. Understand? Yep, mate. Okay, when it's your opportunity, you've got to take him. Only on the angles. Yep. Okay? Yeah. When you're coming in straight, okay, you be careful because he's rolling that hook. Yeah. So there's no need to take risks there. But when you come in off an angle, you can go first and second attempt again. Right. That's where you're going to get him, okay? Work. Go, right, please. This is me. You want it? I am a success. Keep working that gap around him. Around the outside. That's it, mate. Yeah, yeah, as soon as he misses the gap, step back, go over here. Got the drills. He doesn't want it. Back into it they go, Caparello edging closer to a dream. Let's go. Lake Caparello debuted August 2009. For four years, the journey has been. Limited amateur career prior to that, so the learning curve also a steep one. Don't forget the next big time boxing. Coming your way, Thursday the 7th of November, an exciting card that night. One of the fights of the year rematch between Waylon Moore and Brent Elliott. Blake Caparello goes on the offensive here, looking to finish it, and finish it midway through round number nine. Yeah, nice solid left hand from Caparello, but Green looks okay at the moment. Seems to be taken, oh, he doesn't look too good Caparello. there. Has stung Green twice. Can he finish him? Break, break, step back. Green's experience saves him. Buys yep. him a few seconds. But his defences are low. Oh, that one didn't miss either from Caparello. Alan Green hold. just holding on here. Break, step back. Watch the holding. He's a little rubbery on the legs, Alan Green. And having what, been through what they have been through as competitors over the last 24 hours with weigh-in issues behind them, Blake Caparello would love to put the American on his backside and give him something really to remember. Yeah, for sure, and he's trying. Needs to keep the pedal on the metal, Blake Caparello. Don't back off. Seems to have gone back on the back foot. Maybe setting a trap for another left hook, Caparello. Or having a rest. Well, part of the learning curve here for Caparello. Step up in class, no doubt. Oh, nice from Blake. Green through a few in anger as well. We haven't seen that too often. Let's see a point come off soon. Don't hold! Okay, understand. Last warning, don't hold. Box! Caparello. The miss. He's seeing it. We're in it together. Oh, do you hear yeah, wake up, man. Wake up, man. Hey, man, I'm feeling like cut, though. Uh huh? Yeah, wake up, man. I'm feeling like Yeah, but you gotta let that right hand go. But he's going to have get it under. You will be surprised. You can touch this motherfucker. You throw it up, man. Every time you touch your head, he's going behind your head. Yeah. Try to hit you. Throw that. Come on, man. Work that shit, man. Try to hit you. 
Here's the left hand from Caparello, round number nine. Probably his best shot so far. Beautiful work, good round, probably the strongest round for Blake Caparello. Is an end coming for Alan Green. Corner. Time. Get over there. Get over there. Red corner. Enough time wasting, okay? Enough time wasting. Get out quick. Time in. Box. The funny part about that is the ref wastes time to tell the corner about time wasting and the boxes are standing there ready to fight. And they get longer. And they get even longer. We all got a little look at it last round. Is this the round? For Blake Caparello, can he finish Alan Green here? Momentum shift certainly oh suggests it's possible. Look, it is possible if Caparello keeps the foot down. He certainly looks fit enough here in round number 10. Doesn't look overly stressed at all, Blake Caparello. No, Caparello in great condition. Finished with a nice right hook there. Lead hook by Caparello. Not making weight. This type of performance from Alan Green suggests he's happy to come over and take the money. Yeah. Not necessarily with the commitment or the respect that it probably deserves, or that it definitely deserves. Green has very much been in survival mode, not win mode. Ah, that's right. He's only taken a few chances here and there. Caparello. Turning up the volume just a little. Not a lot behind the shots either from Al Green at this stage. No, but the best thing was he threw some. Yeah. Gave us something to look at at least. It was good defence from Caparello as he's on the attack again. Blake's got that confidence that he knows nothing's coming back. or He's, he's pretty confident that nothing's going to come back. Yeah, to danger him. He doesn't look phased at all. Caparello seems to have... Knows that he's just got to stay focused and stay positive. Confidence doesn't seem to be a problem here for Blake Caparello. Ghost dog at times has been like a ghost, hasn't he? Oh, nice. That was a bit better. He just short, but good attempt from Alan Green. Nice body shot from Caparello. Under 20 seconds remaining round number 10. This isn't the knockout round that we suspected it may be. Caparello has let him off here. Yeah, I agree. More yep. so than Green surviving. Round 11 business rounds here for the IBO Light Heavyweight Championship. The match, respectfully, hasn't reached any great heights. No, I thought we might have, might have got a little bit more. And the electricity was in the stadium, or in the venue, I should say, when they entered, that's for sure. Certainly had a good vibe bouncing around. Maybe Blake Caparello took round number 10 off. Let's hope he. Picks it back up here in round number 11. Tries to get rid of the ghost dog. Crown 
out, hopeful of a Caparillo knockout. Just now, five minutes to do it. As you said earlier, Chris, uh, s several knockouts early in his career, some big ones too. Uh, well, even the knockdowns, and yep. you know, like we saw the Latoa one there, we've seen the, the KO, or no, the knockdowns, I should say, with Bolling. Certainly showed the power early on in his career, Blake Caparello. He's been the distance his last four bouts. I don't think you lose power when you're as classy as Blake Caparello, but you adopt a different structure, a different game plan. That's right. The word there is game plan, strategic. He, he certainly, as he stepped up in levels, has been, has been a lot more strategic about things. Sticks to his game plan, and when he does, he does. He sticks to it, and... For mine, I'd like to see a better mix, but a bit more of this from Blake Caparello. Caparello back into the corner. He's doing it so comfortably that Blake's Drop the gear yeah. or two. No, he certainly has, and it's, it's like he's got a different opponent in there at the moment. He's not overly stressed. It's just one of his uh, ones for a fine tune-up for a big fight. This is Blake's big fight. Yep, absolutely it is. Oh, nice left hand down the pipe. Good evasion work from Caparello. Australian boxing wow. ends up on his backside. That'll be on the blooper roll. At least someone went down. The biggest guy in the ring went down. Here ah, fabulous, Phil. He'll have a giggle about it. So too will many others. Round number 11, good evasion work, and look at this from Phil Austin. Down and out the big man. Nice evasive work from Caparello, not so good from Phil. Fighters, touch gloves. Touch them up. Okay, no, good man. Man. Final round, and it has been a long 11. We'll pick up for the 12th, you would expect. A complete shutout on my scorecard in favour of Blake Caparello. It's unofficial, of course. Uh, it would be hard to argue with that. Yeah. It's, you know, maybe the first or second round when they're having a bit of feeling out. Maybe a 10-10 in there or something, but I reckon... Uh, yeah, I can't really see anyone giving it a close fight, that's for sure. They would such an advantage Caparello needs to keep smarts about him in this final round. He's, he has got everything to lose at this point in the fight. Yeah, and we've seen it before, that's for sure, where a fight has controlled the whole fight. And last round, they pull something out of the hat. David Kelvin, Shaggy King. So stay focused for Blake Caparello, but don't don't turn the engine right off. Keep things going. Just over 90 seconds remaining. Blake Caparello, 90 seconds from realising a dream. Green standing in centre ring, he's got the position. Nothing to back it up. 
34 years of age, Alan. He lives in Tulsa, Oklahoma. Not sure he's real keen to back it up anyway. Nah. Oh, nice left hand from Caparello. One minute to go! Two questions along the lines of where's that been? Throwing at Blake Caparello there. Yeah, beautiful left hand. Oh, and again, left hand from Caparello. Much better. Greenfield bows. Caparello needs to remain in the middle of the ring for 40 seconds. The title is his. himself tonight but he hasn't been asked to. No, that's right, yeah. There's a whole lot more to Blake Caparello than what we've seen tonight. And in fact, his last couple of fights, he probably hasn't set the world on fire, but there is so much more to Blake Caparello. Yeah, you're exactly right. He's fought to his game plan and look, at the end of the day, he's going home the IBO light heavyweight world champion here tonight. That's it. Blake Caparello will... Thursday the 7th of November, bell time at 8pm on Fox 3. Plenty coming your way as we await the numbers to come in. Should be no surprises here as we go centre ring to make it official with Perry Kale. Fighters to centering, please, ladies and gentlemen, before we go to the judges, scorecard, big round of applause to both fighters for a fantastic IBO world title bout. <laughs> ladies and gentlemen, after 12 rounds of action, we go to the judges scorecard. Judge number one had it 117, 111. Judge number two had it 118, 110. And judge number three had it 119, 109. You want to make a unanimous decision and the new IBO light heavyweight champion of the world from Australia, the bummer, Blake Capo! Blake Caparello, the IBO light heavyweight champion of the world. He did it and so easily. The hardware that he has worked so long and so hard for. Blake Caparello, the latest world boxing champion. Let's take a look at the results from earlier tonight, Solomon Amono, a massive KO, round number three over Brazilian...
Hope you've enjoyed the night. The glitz, the glamour, the... Finally, the hard work is all done. How does it feel to be called light heavyweight champion of the world? Yeah, mate, it's um, awesome. I couldn't do this without my trainer, best mate, whatever you want to call him, Sam Labruna. Seven years in and out of the ring. We haven't missed a workout. My team, everyone.